Going from a sharpshooter to an expert involves, in many cases, a lot of time, experience, and practice with weapons handling, reloads, target transitions, and movement speed. This is where many shooters start and many are stuck, so this will be a relatively long video packed with many concepts. This is where the slope of the line that describes your weapons handling and shooting skills will be at its highest. That is to say, the difference in your accuracy and shooting speed should have already increased to the point where you can run drills shown by professionals and near the time they're doing them. For example, 7 yard, 2 to the body, and 1 to the head Mozambique should take less than 3 seconds overall. 1.5 seconds for the draw, 1 second for the transition to the head, leaves half a second for wasted time in pulling the trigger. If you think about it that way, 3 seconds is actually very slow. To many expert shooters, and really from now on, you need to be able to consistently avoid the big adders. Procedurals, failure to neutralize, and non-threats. Just like the Mozambique example, each one of these comes with a stiff penalty. Imagine that same Mozambique, but with a non-threat covering half the zero down region. How long does it take to aim so perfectly for two shots at seven yards that you miss hitting the non-threat but still make zero down? The answer is really less than half a second of extra aiming for two separate shots. But if you don't take that extra half a second to truly aim and make a good shot, and you do wind up hitting the non-threat with one of those, it adds five seconds to your time. The equivalent of standing there and perfectly aiming and shooting 20 rounds into the same target. Perfectly. Hopefully this got the point across. Now imagine the same target at 15 yards, but no non-threat. Three shots are required. So let's say you use full half second for each shot. Extra. This makes a two and a half second Mozambique at seven yards take you less than five seconds at 15 yards. If you shoot it in the same two and a half seconds that you did at seven yards, and you miss due to pushing too hard and not ensuring you get good hits, a failure to neutralize is probably in your future. And the penalty for this is not just the points down, but an additional five seconds once again. Five seconds of penalty is exactly how long your overall time should have been if you just gave yourself the extra time to aim and shoot within your abilities, rather than blazing away as quickly as possible. This concept really must be drilled in at this point. Shooting fast is great. In a self-defense scenario, I would almost certainly want to send rounds downrange faster and accept the hypothetical points down from non-center mass hits in many cases, especially a non-hostage situation. But this is a game, and the game harshly penalizes you for not just points down, but to a tremendous degree failures to neutralize, hitting of a non-threat, or making an error in the stage rules, standard rules, or cover rules. Take that extra time where it's needed on a stage to avoid the non-threats, and on the distant targets to truly take the time to aim. Those penalties will add up at the end of the match to disturbing proportions. Uh, Listening to the stage description I, being I given is inherently difficult. Sometimes the course of fire will be spelled out distinctly. Other times it will not, and the SO will declare, shoot from cover, and you're left to come up with your own plan. The important thing at this stage is to ensure that you have the fundamentals of the stage description locked in your mind. Things like draw and fire and attack sequence, or draw and engage while moving, are critical, hard to remember, and will get you an extra three seconds tacked on to your time very quickly. Secondly, listen to what is allowed, disallowed, and of course understand and know the rules. This is where becoming an SO and having gone through the rule book at least once is very beneficial, because you will know what is inherently allowed or disallowed. If there's confusion, ask first. It has happened that a stage description is contradicted the rule book and gives you a benefit. Sometimes they declare an area or room which may lend itself to a moving reload. But more often, picking a plan that will get you a procedural, executing the plan, and then having that procedural explained after you have shot the stage is kind of normal. After the stage description, you have an opportunity to preview the stage. First, look at the overall layout. Determine what is required and what is available to change. Build this chessboard of changes in your mind with all the available plans first, and then sort out what is the best for your division. Doing a reload standing still takes more than a second for most people. We've already established that you should be able to reload without looking down, so why not do it while moving? Almost every opportunity to do a reload while moving should be taken, with few exceptions, even if it means round dumping an extra shot, or three, or not engaging a target until a different position. The time you save by doing that reload while moving from one position to another is almost as long as the time it takes to do a reload standing still. Set your reloads at the right locations and round count, 
ensuring you can reload on the move whenever possible. Round dumping needs to be done where it is least dangerous. Round dumping on the last target in an array just because it happens to be the last target before a reload is not always the smartest move, especially when it's a long shot where there's a non-threat next to it. Trying to make expert shooter often means your timing will be that you're in such a hurry to reload that the last shot fired will often miss because the gun and barrel are already in motion towards your reload. So that being said, sometimes the round dump there will help, sometimes it is not the best idea. Look at tack sequence arrays that typically begin a stage by planning the direction you're going to, or which side of the target array is obstructed as you move further back or towards the side in that direction. The balance is two things. First, if there's a non-thread occluding one side or the other, you don't want that non-thread opportunity to happen on your double, since typically in an array of three targets in front of you, as you fire from one side to another, 1-1-2-1-1, one, one, two, one, one, the two in that sequence will be shot with the least accuracy. So this is typically not a good choice for one that is partially covered with a non-threat. Secondly, if you're backing up and moving to the right, and the far right target will be hidden from view first as you move, this should probably be the third target you engage to ensure that it's done and gone and the remaining targets are visible as you continue moving towards the next firing position. In short, don't let your movement or possible haste make you stop or change your pattern of movement in the middle of a string. Plan for the most opportunity to see and hit your targets. Generally, keep it simple stupid. Your plan for shooting the stage should be in simplistic in nature. Complexity creates risk, and risk can lead to failure. By this time you shouldn't be anxious about the stage, but there's no reason to come up with an overly convoluted plan either. Keep the plan to one reload with retention instead of two, one round dumping session instead of two. If three targets are in front of you to be done in tack sequence and you have eight rounds in the weapon with the opportunity for a useful reload while moving after those shots, then 1-1-2-2-2 one, one, two, two, two will be much easier for your brain to process and remember to do when the buzzer goes off than 1-1-3-2-1 one, 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 or 1-1-4-1-1 one, 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 or 1-1-2-1-3. One, 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 Makeup shots will still hurt, you just have to be fixed as you go, but suffice it to say, for your stage plan, keep it kiss simple. Mapping your times. By this point, it's time to start benchmarking yourself as a shooter and using an empirical method to improve. Getting into a 2,500 pound Honda Civic with a manual transmission running a quarter mile might seem fast by the seat of your pants because it really pulls you back in your seat, and sitting in a 3,500 pound Camaro with an automatic might seem really slow in the same way, but the difference in the actual time is staggering. Get yourself a shot timer. Yes, these are expensive, you probably already have a $500 shot timer. iPhones and Androids all have a plethora of shot timer apps that use the speaker and microphone to mimic a shot timer. Some of them are the same or more accurate than the 100 plus shot timers you can buy. Start mapping your average times. How long does it take for you to draw and fire at a target 5 yards away? 10 yards away? 20 yards away? And get good center hits. How long does it take you to reload? Reload while moving. Reload with retention. How long does it take to arrive at a position of cover, find the target, and engage it from 2 yards, 5 yards, 20 yards? Establish a benchmark and then you can find out where to improve. Which leads me to the next topic, transitions. Over the course of your average stage, you will do one draw, typically one reload, typically five transitions, and move to at least one new place of cover. This means mathematically for the time spent doing each task, the most time you will save is going to be by improving your transitions followed by movement, followed by reloads, and lastly draw. Does that mean you can be fine with a two second draw and engage time? Of course not, but if given ten minutes of practice, I can say that I would much rather spend the majority of my time practicing on things that will help the overall time, such as reloads, rather than the draw. Remember, transitions from one target to another are started by moving your eyes from one s your sights to the new target, then bring your arms and gun to the target, then eyes back to the sights, only practice will make this better, and this is really where a BB gun or a 22 will help you speed things up without breaking the bank. It's now time to start taking a weapon system as a whole that you've already met your needs very well to the next level. Make performance modifications that are allowed in your division to the furthest extent possible. Putting lighter springs in the trigger, recoil springs for lower power factor ammunition that still make power factor but lessens the felt recoil. This will overall help your accuracy, make your follow-up shots better. 
I think the best example of this is doubles and triples. Having a high-speed camera isn't something most of us have access to, but by basic testing you should be able to determine the best configuration for your weapon and ammunition. So standing at 5 yards, you should be able to align your sights and fire twice as quickly as you can pull the trigger. Your first shot should be centered, and your next shot should as well. If your next shot went high or went low, it's because the natural recoil of the gun combined with your grip is not in tune. By increasing or decreasing your power factor of the ammunition, or changing the pound of the recoil spring, you will immediately notice a difference in the same drill. Obviously, putting 135 power factor ammunition in a gun with a 12 pound recoil spring will eventually break something. But make changes within reasonable adjustments. The end goal should be that at least 5 yards you can aim once, fire twice, and move on knowing you have at least, at most, one point down with split times less than 200 milliseconds. This is the time to start looking for your footwork and moving to new cover positions. Taking other people's word for it doesn't help you. Have a shot timer. Find out for yourself what the best movement pattern is. Those extra five half steps you take as you arrive at a position of cover, for example, trying to desperately stay within cover, are not helping your time. They're adding seconds to your time. You should be utilizing full strides whenever moving from one location to another. When moving from one shooting position to another, you should be engaged in the same pattern that exists when racing a car on a track. As you begin, you need to be accelerating as quickly as traction will allow. And then when the time comes to stop, you need to be decelerating as quickly as traction will allow. This is the same in moving from one position of cover to another. Sprint in the direction of your goal. Then at the last minute, hard stop at your new location of cover, letting momentum propel your body into a leaning position ready to shoot while retaining balance on both feet. At this point, try to be mindful of the target and not your feet. You already know what it feels like to lean and use cover properly, so let your shooting hands locate the edge of cover and your body get there the rest of the way. This is really a technique for a stage you haven't had time to really map out where cover is and is not, but the experience you will get with this methodology will help you in the long run. Accuracy in shooting while moving is something that takes experience in many cases. Your body and eyes and trigger will naturally help you in this the more and more over time. And you will find that you break the shot on a target and get hits with a moving sight picture because your brain knows how to time it perfectly. That being said, there are some significant things you can do to help stabilize your shooting platform while moving to increase accuracy. When most people walk, their heads bob up and down. If you hold a cup of water that is full to the brim while walking, you will undoubtedly spill. This is a concept that many of us should have learned as children playing beanbag races. Place a beanbag on top of your head, move from one location to another without it falling off. You'll find that the more you bend your knees to keep your head stable and not bouncing, the less the bag will fall. And as you practice, you will find you can jog or run this way and retain the bag. That's because you're using your flexibility and the shock absorbers that are your legs and knees. You're naturally stabilizing your shooting platform. And with a stable shooting platform, you can get easier, better hits on your target while moving. Technique for walking is important as well in this. Heel to toe movement while going forward, and toe to heel movement while going backwards. This is the same as walking through dead leaves while trying to be quiet. A rapid foot movement when the foot is in the air, followed by a slower distinct movement as you come in contact with the ground on your heel first, then toe. Heel, toe, heel, toe. Simple technique. Bend your knees while moving and keep your head from bobbing up and down. It will be almost as if you're shooting while standing still. I like to call it the truffle shuffle. The stage description says be moving while you engage those targets. It doesn't say you have to move X number of feet. It just says moving. So they don't care if you move 2 feet or 20 feet. A good example of this is stage 2, string 1 and 2 of the classifier. In string 1, you're moving forward from 10 yards. 10 yards is not far. So step forward with one or two steps as you draw the gun. But after that, your knees should be bent. You should be moving at a snail's pace as you engage the targets. It doesn't benefit you to get closer than the 8 yards you are already at. It just eats time. In the same way, string 2. There's no sense in getting further away from the targets. Your toe-to-heel baby steps as you move backwards can be as small as you want in order to maintain a steady platform for the top half of your body. How far you step is up for debate based on the stage you're shooting, how accurate you need to be on those targets, and how far it is to the next shooting position. But the fundamental is the same. Bend your knees, use the shocks God gave you to keep the top half still while you're shooting. Don't waste time looking for bullet holes in your targets. Shooters waste nearly as much time shooting as they do looking at the target to ensure they got a hit. 
To be an expert shooter, you need to trust your aim, accuracy, and trigger pull well enough to instinctively know that when the shot was fired, whether it was good or whether it was bad and requires another. You should be looking at your sights and not the target. Never look for holes in the target during a string of fire and decide whether more shots are required. This is going to force you to shoot better and save you time in the long run. To be an expert shooter, you must put eyes to the target, sights to the target, pull the trigger, trust your shot, and move on. As always, you should shoot as many matches as possible. Earn your experience and seat time, which will improve everything. Find sanctioned matches and work towards goals. Unfortunately, as an SO, I can tell you that the shooters I'm most worried about are sharpshooters. They typically have been to a half a dozen or a dozen matches at least, and are familiar with what to do. But they think raw speed will win and accuracy will be terrible. They go way too fast, beyond their abilities to hit the target, and worst of all, they're at the greatest safety risk. Muzzle and finger calls can or should happen a lot, and DQs and accidental discharges happen in this group more than any other in my opinion. Keep it safe, shoot within your abilities, and continue to build good habits and keep your strong foundation of safe gun handling.